Namaste dear friends the topic for today's discussion is what is criticism we the literature students time and again come across to a word called criticism and it is very necessary for us to understand what is criticism and uh, what are the functions of criticism and how criticism works and why criticism is very important we must learn all these things and today we will learn nature of criticism and uh, the origin of the word criticism and uh, we will also learn who used the word criticism for the first time and then we'll we will understand which is first whether creation is first or criticism is first then we will learn the definitions of criticism by which we will be able to understand the nature and functions of criticism first of all origin of the word the word criticism is taken from two terms one is from greek term criticos and the second one is from latin word criticus which means to interpret to judge or to evaluate thus by the origin of the word we understand that the function of criticism is to interpret is to judge and is to evaluate what does criticism interpret evaluate and judge it interprets it evaluates it judges a creative work then who used the word criticism for the first time it was john dryden who first used the word criticism in the preface of the state of innocence he writes criticism as it was first instituted by aristotle was meant a standard of judging well according to john dryden criticism is a tool which sets a standard of judging well a creative work and uh, he brings about aristotle the father of everything and uh, john dryden says the function or the work of criticism is to set a standard of a particular work then we will have to learn which one is first whether creation is first or criticism is first as we all know criticism cannot exist without creation and creation comes first criticism next by these things we understand that the function of criticism is to interpret and to judge literary works how in an unbiased and dispassionate manner so that the creative writers produce excellent works and the readers enjoy literature in an in light honored manner then what is the function of criticism criticism enables the man who has the energy to create literature criticism encourages the creative mind to create more and more literature criticism makes the most intelligent and therefore 
द मोस्ट एपीसियंट यूज ऑफ हिज एनर्जी क्रिटिसिजम ब्रिंग्स अबाउट द इंटेलिजेंस ऑफ द माइंड एज वेल इट ब्रिंग्स अबाउट द एपीसियंट एनर्जी ऑफ द क्रिएटिव माइंड एंड क्रिटिसिजम इनेबल्स द मैन who has the capacity to enjoy literature it makes his enjoyment the most intelligent and therefore the most discriminating and most illuminating kind of experience is brought about by criticism thus criticism is distinct from creation and enjoyment and criticism consists in asking and answering rational questions about literature then we will learn who is a critic who is a critic as per the scholars a critic is an ideal judge and a reader who brings to bear a trained judgment on whatever he reads the critic rationally and intellectually examines a work of art or literature and then passes his own judgment about its worth and merit thus criticism flourishes in an atmosphere of intellectual freedom and inquiry criticism presupposes an open society and it is one of the conditions by which such a society survives now we will see some of the definitions of criticism by reading the definitions we will understand the nature and functions of criticism first definition is webster dictionary judges criticism as the art of judging or evaluation uh it means criticism judges the knowledge of the creative mind and propriety of the creative mind as well the beauties and faults of works of art or literature according to webster dictionary criticism judges knowledge intellect propriety beauty and faults of a work of art or literature and criticism can be defined as the conscious evaluation or appreciation of a work of art either according to the critic's personal taste or according to some accepted aesthetic ideas increasingly it is stated as it was always implied that to set off as a critic is to set off as a judge of values a critic may interpret a work of art in his own taste or according to some accepted norms and criticism increases the taste of reading and it increases the value of the literary work the next definition is by edmund goss he defines criticism as the art of judging and judging the values of an aesthetic object he says the function of criticism is to judge 
the values the qualities of an aesthetic object whether it is in literature or the fine arts he means that the art of judging the qualities and values of an aesthetic object of literature or fine arts and he means the true criticism is always try to establish a definite hierarchy among the great artists of the past as well as to test the production of the present and uh, someone defines criticism as criticism is play of the mind on the aesthetic qualities of literature having for its object an interpretation of literary values the next definition of criticism is by water of peter one of the best artists of 19th century he defines criticism as criticism is the art of interpreting art he means that criticism is an intermediary between the author and the reader and it acts as an agent between the reader and the writer sorry uh, writer by explaining the one to the other water peter says that criticism explains author to the reader and it 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 also explains reader to the author thus criticism is the exercise of judgment in the province of art and literature the next definition of criticism is by one of the greatest poets of victorian period that is matthew arnold he defines criticism as criticism is the disinterested endeavor to learn and propagate the best that is known and thought in the world for criticism for sorry for matthew arnold criticism the the function of criticism is to bring about the best in the world the very function of criticism is to find out which is best the next definition of criticism is by one of the greatest writers of 20th century t s eliot he defines criticism as commentation and exposition of works of art by means of written words he says the function of criticism is to comment upon the literary works and it has to expose the good as well as bad of that literary work and he says the end of criticism is the elucidation of works of art and the correction of taste according to ts eliot criticism has to elucidate works of art and criticism makes a correction of our taste it corrects the taste of the reader as well the writer by discussing the above definitions we understand how literary criticism or criticism works and these definitions throw light on nature of criticism and function of criticism in our next class we will discuss functions of criticism in detail and then we will go on discussing 
types of criticism thank you very much please subscribe to my youtube channel basavraj bilgi to get notified about the further videos thank you very much